And now on to our dinosaur of the day, Sauropod Giraffe Titan, which was a request from Michelle and Remy via Facebook. So thanks. The name Giraffe Titan means giant giraffe. And it was a sauropod that lived in the Jurassic in what is now Tanzania in Africa. The type species is Giraffe Titan bronchii. And originally it was thought to be a brachiosaurus. It was first named and described in 1914 by Werner Jenensch, but as Brachiosaurus bronchii. And this was based on specimens found in the Tendigaru Formation in 1909 and 1912 in Tanzania, which was then German East Africa. Partial skeletons were found, including three skulls, limb bones, vertebrae, and teeth. And then in 1903, Elmer Riggs named and described Brachiosaurus, and we cover that in episode 39 if you want to learn more. Brachiosaurus is one of the most well-known dinosaurs, but interestingly, its image is based mainly on Giraffa Titan bronchii and not Brachiosaurus altithorax. However, Brachiosaurus and Giraffa Titan are considered to be sister taxa. In 1988, Gregory S. Paul said that Brachiosaurus bronchii had significant differences compared to Brachiosaurus altithorax, the one that was found in North America. He thought that the proportions of its trunk vertebrae were different and that it had a more gracile build, so he created the subgenus Brachiosaurus bronchii. In 1991, George Olszewski said there were enough differences for it to be its own genus, and so then it became Giraffa Titan bronchii. In 1998, a description of a North American Brachiosaurus skull was published. The skull was found almost 100 years earlier, and it was actually the skull Marsh used in early reconstructions of Brontosaurus, <laughs> and it was identified as Brachiosaurus. And this skull looks similar to Camarasaurus in some ways, with similar front teeth and a longer, less hollowed-out skull compared to the short-snouted, high-crested Giraffa Titan skull. Not all scientists accepted Giraffa Titan as a separate genus at first, but then Michael Taylor published a detailed comparison of the two in 2009, and he showed differences between the two in every fossil bone that he could compare. So he showed differences in size, shape, and proportion. Giraffa Titan, as you can imagine, looked a little bit like a giraffe. It had long forelimbs and a long neck. And for a long time, it was the largest known dinosaur, but now other titanosaurs have been found that are bigger, like Argentinosaurus and Patago Titan, for example. Giraffa Titan was about 71.5 to 73.8 feet, or 21.8 to 22.5 meters long, and 39 feet or 12 meters tall, based on a subadult found. So it may have been longer, maybe even up to 85 feet or 26 meters, based on a fibula of another specimen found. The fibula that was found is 13% larger than the subadults. Giraffa Titan is estimated to weigh 23 to 39 tons, though it could have been larger, and estimates are based on the subadult. The skull had a high crest. For a long time, scientists thought that Giraffa Titan's nostrils were on the top of its head. Early theories about sauropods, as we've discussed, were that they used their nostrils like a snorkel and spent a lot of time underwater. Hmm. Now scientists think that Giraffa Titan, though, was a land animal. Like giraffes. <laughs> <laughs> Giraffa Titan had nostrils near its snout, not at the top of its head, even though the nasal openings were high above the eyes. And this is according to Lawrence Wittmer's 2001 study. Yeah, meaning that... The skull nasal openings were near the top of his head, but then the soft tissue redirected it towards the front of the face where you'd normally expect to see nasal openings. Yep. So if the nostrils were near the snout, it's possible then that Giraffa Titan used the crest at the top of its head as a resonating chamber, possibly for communicating among its own species or attracting a mate or displaying dominance. Giraffa Titan had spatulate teeth, looked like chisels. And there's been a hypothesis that Giraffa Titan had a trunk, but Giraffa Titan had wear and tear on its teeth that would have been from biting and tearing off plant matter and not from grinding, which would have been the case if it had had a trunk and used that to rip off branches and leaves and then ground up its food. I wonder why someone thought it would have a trunk. That would really make it look crazy. I couldn't find much information. <laughs> yeah, it would just add even more pressure on that super long neck. <laughs> like if you put a giraffe and an elephant together. Yeah, <laughs> weird. Yeah. Giraffe Titan was probably a high browser, but could get to food at the tops of trees. And it had claws on the first toe of its front feet and first three toes of its hind feet. It had a small brain with a low encephalization quotient, which estimates possible intelligence of either 0.6 or 0.79. Oof. Yeah. <laughs> Not great, but who knows? Some people used to think Giraffa Titan had a second brain because of this sacral enlargement above the hip, but that was probably glycogen bodies which stored energy. 
You can see Giraffatitan bronchii at the Museum für Naturkunde in Berlin. It's one of the largest and tallest mounted skeletons in the world. The Giraffatitan in Berlin is actually made of five individuals. It's a composite, and it's recently been updated based on what we know about it. That's kind of like the Patagotitan is based on several individuals, too. Mm -hmm. If you can't make it to Berlin, you can also see Giraffatitan come to life on Google Cardboard or YouTube 360 in Giraffatitan Back to Life in Virtual Reality. And in that, the skeleton comes to life and turns into a 3D dinosaur and walks around. It's pretty cool. Nice. I love some good VR. Mm-hmm.